Okay, so if you remember, in a previous video, we looked at integrals involving sines and cosines, where we had to convert everything in terms of secant and tangent in order to be able to integrate. Sometimes the opposite happens. You have an integral in terms of tangent and secant. The usual methods of factoring a secant squared or a secant tangent do not work, and so your other bet is to try and convert them into sines and cosines. And so in this video, we will consider three examples of such a problem. So suppose we ask first to integrate tangent of x over secant of the 5 of x. So if we ask, can we factor a secant squared? Well, the answer is no, there's no secant on top. Can we factor a secant tangent? There's no secant on top. And here, I'll show you at the end, we could do something a little devious here, but for now we'll just say there's no secant squared on top, so we can't do it, and there's no secant tangent, so we can't do it. So let's just try to convert everything in terms of sines and cosines. So I'll split up the fraction. I'll write this as tangent of x times 1 over secant of the 5 dx. So let's replace, by definition of tangent in terms of sines and cosines, it is sine of x over cos of x. And secant, if you think of it, is 1 over cos. So here you have 1 over 1 over cos, that's cosine, but there's a power of 5, so it's times cosine to the 5x, and of course dx. We can of course simplify, this is cosine to the 4, and I will put the sine of x first, and you'll see why in a second. So we have the fourth power of cosine times a leftover of sine of x dx. And now the integral is essentially trivial, as we can let u be cos of x. The differential du, of course, will be negative sine of x dx. We want to solve for sine of x dx, so we'll negate both sides. And so negative du is sine of x dx. So the integral becomes essentially trivial, replacing cos by u, u to the 4, times sine of x dx, which is negative du. And we now apply the power rule. And of course we replace, back in terms of a function at x, replacing u by cos of x. So we have negative cos to the fifth power of x over 5 plus c. And that's it. Now I want to show you just a sneaky way that you could have solved this problem keeping tan and secant. But this, I think, is more natural, as it's more straightforward. You're saying, I'm stuck with tan and secant, convert everything in terms of sine and cosines, and then things work out with a simple u substitution. But what if... We made this observation. We're saying everything here is a function of secant, except the tan on top. We can't factor a tangent alone, but only a secant tangent, so what if we multiply top and bottom by secant of x? This is simply 1, so we're not changing the expression. And now you can write this as 1 over the 6th power of secant times secant of x tan of x. And if you let u be secant, you'll have the integral of 1 over u to the 6. And du, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, so this will be du. Of course, if you bring this back up, you'll have u to the negative 6. Power rule, add 1 to the exponent, subtract, divide, sorry, by the new exponent, plus c. And in the end, this was a secant. 
So we have a negative 1 over 5 times secant to the negative 5 of x plus c. And this is the same as this because secant is 1 over cos. So once you negate the fraction, you'll have cos to the 5 on the numerator. And that's it. But you can agree, hopefully, that this was more straightforward. We said we don't have a secant squared or a secant 10. We convert, and then we have a clear u substitution. This was a little bit sneakier. We said there's something missing on the numerator. With our tangent, we'd like to have a secant. So we introduce it, and then things worked out. But this is a bit more subtle. All right, let's go to another example. But if we integrate tangent squared, over secant of x dx. Now here, there are two ways to attack this problem. Again, we don't have a secant 10 on top, and we don't have a secant squared. But if you think of it, we can pull off a secant squared by replacing 10 squared by secant squared minus 1. So let's try this. Now, if we leave it like this, not very useful. But let's divide through. Secant squared over secant is simply secant of x minus 1 over secant. Now, the idea here is if you think of it, secant is 1 over cos. So you have 1 over 1 over cos, so this is simply cos of x. And now we can easily evaluate both integrals. If you remember, the integral of secant is a special integral, which was tackled by using a very crafty uh, u-substitution. And the integral of secant of x is, if you recall, the ln of secant of x plus tangent of x in absolute value. So this you have to know, because again, deriving this answer is very tricky. And of course, the integral of cos is sine, so we get minus sine of x plus, of course, c. So that's one way of doing it. Or we could have right away replaced everything in terms of sine and cosine. And let's see what happens in this case. So tangent is sine over cosine, so tangent squared is sine squared over cos squared. And secant is 1 over cos, so 1 over 1 over cos is times, of course, cosine. You can simplify, and you'll have a sine squared over cosine. And once again, we're kind of stuck here, because if we factor a sine from the numerator, then everything else must be a function of cosine. And as we have a sine of x left over, this will introduce a square root, root of 1 minus cos squared. And this will make for a very difficult integral. The idea here is to replace sine squared by 1 minus cos squared, just as we did in this case. And now if you divide through, 1 over cos of x, aha, is secant of x, minus cos squared over cos is cos of x. And I'll stop there, as obviously this is the same integral. So two ways of approaching the problem, converting the tangent squared by a secant squared minus 1, arriving to this, or converting it to sines and cosines, and then sine squared by 1 minus cos squared. 
just to give you two different perspectives on how to start the problem, what's kind of neat here is that no matter how you approach it, you arrive at the same integral. Okay, so let's do one last problem. Okay, so we have tangent squared of x over secant of the 5 of x. Again, we can factor a secant squared. And even if you play the game of secant squared over secant squared, you'd have an odd power here of secant, and you couldn't convert back nicely into tangent. So that's not going to work. Even if you tried secant over secant to factor a secant tangent, you'll have a single tangent left over, which you'll have to replace by the square root of secant squared minus 1, which again will make for a impossible integral. So here, we'll just replace everything in terms of sines and cosines and see what happens. Tangent squared will be sine squared over cos squared. And again, secant is 1 over cos. So we have 1 over 1 over cos, which gives us times cos, but there's a fifth power, so times cos of the 5. We, of course, now want to simplify, so sine squared. Cos of the 5 over cos squared is cos cubed. So now we have an integral in terms of sine and cosines with an odd power, and those are the easiest tree integrals. We want to factor from the odd power a single cosine. And because we factor the cosine, we want everything else to be a function of sine, so we'll just replace cos squared by 1 minus sine squared. And of course, then we'll let u be sine of x. The differential du will be cos of x dx and we're left with a simple polynomial. u squared, 1 minus u squared, and cos of x dx is simply du. We can multiply out. Use the power rule. and reverse, or I should rewrite, the expression back in terms of x. So u is sine of x, so we can replace. So we get sine cubed over 3 minus sine to the 5 over 5 plus c. And of course, you could factor a sine cubed, but we'll leave it like this. And so that's it. So whenever you have an integral involving secant and tangent, you can try and factor a secant squared rewrite everything left over in terms of tangent. You could try and factor a secant tangent, rewrite everything left over in terms of secant, and if that fails, you can always try and rewrite the integral in terms of sines and cosines, and hopefully this will work out. And that's it.